We're going to go back to Jeff's point, I think, all right? So, yeah. do, you, should, do you think the victim's family should choose the method if we're going to go down this punishment avenue? We're going to pass it over here. You have to hold the mic. You're going to have to help me out. I'm stretching. I'm stretching. I don't think they should choose the method of, like, death, because I just... I don't think that um, death should be, like, a punishment. Okay, so death should... I mean, but it's a little bit ominous, isn't it? Talking about <laughs> death right now, with this parade going on behind us. Free but from uh, desire playing in the background. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do a really smooth switcheroo. But I, yeah, but I, like I think that um, if we're talking about whether they should get a second chance or not, I yeah. think that the, the victim's family should choose whether they get a second chance or not. Oh, okay. Not, maybe. not to do with death, but... Whether they get like get let out or whatever. Right. Okay. So not that they get to choose the method of death, but maybe do they get a chance of redemption? Perhaps. So now, first of all, I, I, I like to do what I get in the middle. Just get a round of names. I know we all know Mikey, but I don't know everybody. So let's do. I'm gonna put away for that. That trombone just to pass there, because it's pretty fabulous, isn't it? But I think we'll get a round of names and we're gonna carry on this. So we are gonna start here with Mikey. What's your name? My name's Mikey. Mikey. Tristan. Tristan. Brian. Brian. Poppy. Poppy. Izzy. Izzy. Liv. Liv. My name's Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been waiting all day for that one, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> well. Well, great name. John. John. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Emily. Emily. Kate. Kate. Tegan. Tegan. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. And I am Will. This is Tokyo. And what a day we've been having, isn't it? Mark? It's been fantastic. So, what was it? You've been here for an hour. Been well, been it's an been hour. a good hour, I'm hoping. Yeah. But. I mean, the, the, I just want to talk to talk about this idea of you know, what justice is all about, and I do think it should be all about the if someone gets murdered. The, I think that's my bit. Yeah, thanks. Uh, but there's this idea called restorative justice, where somebody, if they, you know, the thing, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and a life for a life. The original meaning of that is that if you broke someone's tooth, you have to chew for them. If you make someone blind, you have to see. You have to see for them. You have to help them out for the rest of their life in seeing in seeing for them. So in a way, the justice of killing somebody is about helping out that family or about trying to repair. It's impossible, but it's about trying to repair the damage that's done. That's done. So if we think then actually they get redemption, they should now help the family. Is that is that something? Or we'll go back over to Jeff. Let's say, is that not just one interpretation of the Bible, in the fact that the the words are written like that? But you know they couldn't be interpreted in your way. But then the other way is you take their eye. You know it's it just depends on the. Who uh, who you ask and who, you know who's who's thinking about it? We've got many points. I'm going to bring it over to Emily first of all. I think if someone's murdered someone, they should set up so like they die how they killed the person. Okay. All right. So we're getting we're getting a little bit dark now, people. Right? Is it okay first? Yes, John. Can I, can I throw this one in and, I'll, and then I'm going to go? I I'm not a believer in the death penalty, and I never was. Um, I would think in a humane society it has no place. And then I was having a conversation with someone, and I said, I don't believe in the death penalty, it shouldn't exist. And he said, do you have a child? I said, yeah, I've got a daughter. And he said, what if someone killed your daughter and hurt your daughter, what would you do? And I said, if I could get to them, I would kill them. Mm. And I don't believe in the death penalty. So that is, that's a really so sticky so moral area for me. Well, no. Well, in that case, do I believe in the death penalty? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because if it's someone else, I think it's, it's hard to empathise, isn't it? No, we've got a couple of points. We're going to come over here. Um, I think that if if someone's killed someone, then killing them would be like the easy way out for them. But if you just punish them for the rest of their life or something, then that's pretty... Yeah. So is it, is it, is it the incarceration <laughs> so like, system, is that to punish them, or is it for rehabilitation? What, what's it for? I guess it could be, society, yeah, take them away from what you. they could do again. Yeah. Because if they could do it again, then why would you let them just get away with it by killing them and get, giving them a way out? Okay, Will's, Will's maybe thinking that we should just put them all on a little island. Right. I think I have we maybe tried that before. Final thought, Jeff, before you go. Despacito 2 on the way. Okay, Despacito <laughs> on the way. We're going to come to Mikey at a point. I just said, just repair, try and repair the damage that's done get the criminals not just with murder but with any crimes get them to repair the damage that's done like for example whoever stole my android charging cable if they just bring that back I'd be happy <laughs> damage is repaired yeah, we, we're hunting I'm, for I'm on 36% at the moment 36% yeah. yes, I'm afraid that principle doesn't work why didn't it work because if you ask murderers to repay what they've done, then how can they bring someone that they've murdered back to life? Interesting point, same one as John raised. I'm going to turn the mirror back on you. What do you think? Do you think we could solve that? Do you think there's anything they could do to make recompense for it? Um, 
Oh god, that's a deep one, isn't it? That's a deep one, yeah. I'm pointing oh, that's a deep one, missing. isn't it? Don't um, worry, I'm just. But I will out. say, if we don't have the death penalty, does that devalue the lives of the victims? Oh, okay. Whoa. All right, what do we go? What do we think, guys? Bloody hell! It, steady on, it's only half two. <laughs> I mean, I mean that. I think, I think, Kristen, you just stunted the conversation there. I just dropped the mic oh, and walked away. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jesus what do you think? Yeah. Do we want to carry on with this? Do you want to take it down I, a different avenue? Yeah, we, what can, are we, we thinking? can move on. What do you guys want? It's up to you. Move on. All right. All right. What do you want to move on to then? What do you want to people want to talk about? Legalisation of marijuana. Le oh, right, straight in there. Yeah. Yes. Legalisation. Yes. What? So what, what do we... I just want to say, because I think this does link together, because it's like, who... I mean, obviously something like murder, we all know that's wrong and it shouldn't happen. But there's lots of things that the government de defines as illegal that I don't think are wrong. For example the imbibing of marijuana I think you know and there's plenty of things like what is legal is not the same as what is right or wrong okay so w any opinions on this what do we think guys do we agree do we disagree yes Liv I don't really know whether I agree or disagree because obviously there are like two sides to everything but I think when the Lib Dems were doing their campaign I think they just sort of chucked it in there to appeal to the stoners and get more votes oh uh, okay we, we were talking about this a little bit before <laughs> weren't we sort of appealing to the younger generation so do you think they, the Lib Dems actually believe that or is that something they're just doing to get more votes um, oh. I don't think they'd really thought about it enough like as much as they should have done oh, okay interesting well I mean We've gone very quiet over this side of the table. Tegan, what are you saying? Well, marijuana isn't the only thing that affects society, and it is illegal, but there's like cigarettes, there's drink and everything, which are more of a bad cause than everything, because tobacco is the number one biggest killing drug. Okay. And that's still legal, and people are allowed to do it. I mean, you see everyone pretty much doing it. What do you think that is then? Why do we think that that's, that's legal and the rest of marijuana is illegal? Well, I think it would be pretty hard to make it illegal because of the amount of users whereas the, compared to the amount of users of marijuana there's a tiny little percent I mean a lot of people probably have smoked weed before but like it's not like druggies or something like that yeah all right now we're going to come to Wilt and Mikey both being pretty passionate right. over here yeah uh, I believe that weed has kind of become a very demonized drug and no one has ever died of you can't overdose on marijuana whereas how, however many people die from alcohol and Tobacco related. Um, <laughs> Don't panic, that wasn't a reaction so, yeah. to Will, that's tobacco, okay. Yeah. It was a wasp. Tobacco Don't and panic. alcohol related um, oh like health issues. Oh, but it's become. So, but uh, I think that alcohol and tobacco have both become very socially accepted um, yeah. drugs. So it's about social acceptance? Yeah, but the, the, yeah it's purely social acceptance. Because, um, well, you see it coming into America now, weed's becoming very accepted. And but in California you can go into any pharmacy, pick up a couple of grams, whatever you like, and so maybe walk out. But yeah, and it's just not happening here yet. But I think at some point we will kind of. Don't don't panic, go. Johnny. You're going. You can't. You can't just stand up and walk. You've got to leave us with a final thought, John. You can't do that to me. That what? Final thought. Well, if if alcohol and and cigarettes were were brought out today, they would be illegal. They wouldn't legalise them, would they? And they because they are both very dangerous substances, but but cannabis is. Um, I mean, obviously, I've never smoked cannabis, but back in my day, it, it was quite weak. It was resin. It was quite weak. Now they've got these strains of skunk, and to, to say that there's no damage from smoking cannabis is is wrong because people develop psychosis. Um, some some of my peers. I mean, I'm in my mid 40s. Some of my peers who smoked it, they've thrown their lives away because they've spent their whole lives watching box sets and, and smoking weed sat on the settee. And that's a waste of a life because that's all they've done for 20 oh, years. That's quite the final thought there, John, leaving on that <laughs> that's one. That's my final thought. Have we enticed you back in to stay for a little bit longer? No, I've got to go. My wife's <laughs> okay. going to kill me. No problem. Well, big round of applause <laughs> for John, though. You've been absolutely brilliant. I did promise I would like come over to Mikey first. People no, I kind of agree with a lot of what you're saying, but I don't think that means it should be illegal. You know, I've got friends as well that have just smoked their lives away as well. And also, I live on a on a council estate, and a lot of those ki the kids that live there are all smoking weed, and they are getting absolutely. They're just like they are getting a bit psychotic, and it's it's not very healthy. But I don't think I don't just think just joining this buzzing conversation. Yeah, it's just, I don't think making it illegal actually helps the the issue. It just makes it more glamorous in a way. Yeah. When what they're doing is just like deadening their brains. Oh, okay, interesting. No, we've got lots of hands. We're going to come over here, yeah. And, like, um, I know, like, 
having drugs may like help throw your life away, but it's not always down to that. It could be other things like just not getting a job or like not bothering at all. Right, might not so just be down to the drugs. Interesting. Oh, there's so many answers. We're gonna come here. Yes, if. Um, I feel like they wouldn't legalize it properly um, unless they found like a big issue to hide it behind though I don't think they'd be like okay well now all of a sudden you're just able to just like sit around and smoke weed I think the issues with like the people who've got actual genuine illnesses and are in loads of pain and then they think that that would help them I think legalizing okay. medicinal cannabis is like like the first step but I don't so I don't think decriminalising it for medicinal, not yeah, recreational. Yeah, I, I don't think that they will um, legalise it for recreational use until they find like something to hide it behind, because otherwise people will just look at the government and be like, what ah, are you doing? Okay, well, what we're saying, you were saying it was sort of being legalised in other countries already, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Well, well, do you know what excuse they're using to legalise it now? Um, the, well, medicinal for one, for one, yeah. You've got mental health issues that can be solved with marijuana and. I think it was chronic pain as well. That's very, like that. That's one of them as well. And I don't know, recreational use. Yeah. It's, it's just nice to kind of sit back and no. have a joint for most, isn't it? We got lots of points. We're gonna come here. You've been waiting a long time. Yeah, but marijuana doesn't really solve mental health issues. It just kind of like makes them numb, so they don't actually feel it. Which means that they'll just like end up in a spiral, getting worse and worse, and then they will oh, be unemployed. Okay. So it's not helping it, it's just sort of contributing to yeah. the problem. If we legalise it, it's just going to escalate more. Tegan, you seem passionate, right? You look like someone on a mission right now. If we legalise every drug, I'm sorry, but this world is going to turn one crazy heck of a world. And... and it already is. <laughs> and there's a lot of people who aren't smoking drugs, partly because it's illegal. If it's legal, a lot more people will do it, it'll become the norm. The world will probably turn into something that's even worse than it is now, which is pretty hard to believe but it'll it's just the word will turn bad now we had a big reaction from Tristan and Brian I'm gonna come over here what are you thinking oh hello um I'd like to go back to Will's point over there should we really be using other countries uh, as examples to set our laws yeah. and following them so for instance if we were to adopt Canada's human rights where it's now a criminal offense to misgender people is that the way forward Okay, so do we need to pave the way ourselves or we follow? I'm going to get untangled and come around here to live. I think that um, it will also be hard to legalise because like, they've got a blanket rule that's like there are no legal highs because they, cause they made NOS illegal as well. And it's like, I think right. I think once they legalise marijuana, everyone will be like, well, well, then this is just as bad or this is like like not as bad as this, so why don't you legalise this? And then they'll sort of be like, oh, because then it will get a bit <laughs> messy over what should be illegal and what shouldn't. It's getting a bit deep. Now, if I remember right, is it Mark and is it Lisa? Yeah. Is that right? Yes, all right. Point for all. Fantastic. Take a seat. Talking about legalising cannabis at the moment, aren't we? It's getting, it's getting pretty deep. Yes, Mark? It's an interesting um, correlation sort of thing here. People talk about legalising marijuana, but look at how it's been made illegal, how things like new psychoactive substances were made illegal. Right? They were made illegal almost instantly, right, when people thought it was getting out of hand, right? When people thought people were dying as a result of them. What hasn't been made illegal, right, even though it's killing things, like plastic bags. It took oh. ages for plastic bags, for single-use plastic bags to be banned, right? Why did it take so long for single-use plastic bags to be banned, yet new psychoactive substances were banned instantly? Because new psychoactive substances kill things. Plastic bags don't. All right. Like the world. Mike has got a response. We're going to go yeah. over here. It's not true that you can't get high off of a plastic bag if you just tie it around your head and well, just breathe them out. You can actually get high off of that. No. But I think it's a lot harder and it's probably a lot more dangerous as well. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> but is, is it about the fact that the, 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 the government no, just a point, okay. the government doesn't want us to get high? Is that what it is that we don't? They don't want us to sort of like reach those heights. Maybe they're worried about what Tegan was saying. Maybe yeah. it's going to just go crazy and all get a little yeah. bit. Hey, what, well. what do we think? There's a lot. Yes, Will. Drugs are already available illegally. If you go deep enough anywhere, you will find drugs in any in any place. You'll show. You'll, you'll find them. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll find them in schools. You'll find them in offices. You'll find them wherever. You'll find big shot CEOs snorting cocaine off whatever. Wow. The the problem. The thing is, if you were to legalise that, then you have a form of control over it. Really, like. So it's better, it's no, because it's yeah. already available. But you think, you think people, are then, people 
if you're buying it illegally, you don't know what you're buying necessarily. Like you could be buying weed that's then cut with a load of skunk yeah, or whatever, they can which could then be leading to worse things. But if you legalize it and you can control the substance and people can recreationally use it, like in a controlled environment, and they won't suffer from any kind of bad repercussions. More regulation. Yeah, there's more regulation. Now I'm going to come to live into Mikey. Like obviously the black market will still be a thing, but like it always will be. But um, like yeah, stuff like that. It's just if it's regulated, it'd be a lot safer. Right. Okay. So maybe it's going to make it a safer country to regulate all these drugs. I'm not that bothered about marijuana, but I'm quite partial to MDMA. Right. And uh, I think MDMA is actually quite a good drug, and I think you know for adults it should be it should be available in boots because I don't like buying MDMA from a dealer because I don't know what it is. There's there's there, there are there are I'd rather get it from boots where you know what you're buying. So is that something you'd like to see then? Being able to go into boots, so you got like you get get tobacco, you got your drinks, you got your MDMA. You're like, yeah, why, why not? Why not? Yeah. No, no, Tristan, you you what your I hand went up and then you look confused. Like, what? Did it? What were your yeah, thoughts? What were your thoughts? What? Oh dear. Do you think Hello. we should have MDMA in boots? Well, <laughs> that's an interesting <laughs> question. The question I think we should be asking is how do we regulate it? Do we regulate it through nationalised services like the NHS or do we right. regulate it through privatised companies? Okay. More like, so through like Boots for instance, right. or, or would you rather get MDMA from the government? So do you need to go to your G local GP to pick up your sort of your MDMA your for the festival or to get your fix? Is that, that what we're saying? All right, we're going to go up to Mark first, yeah. It's just, it's interesting, um, Anya's chap, um, he used to peddle a bit of weed and you would have thought that somebody would, who sell weed would be pro-legalisation. And he was completely against the idea of legalising it because his thoughts were that when it's illegal, pretty much, I mean, okay, you can buy it from dodgy geezers on the street and you're a muppet, or so if you get it from someone you know. And when you get it from someone you know, you buy it from some. It, everybody knows them there. It's all friendly. So if everyone's your mate because otherwise you get into trouble. Right, if you get strangers involved. And so he was against legalisation because he felt that if you legalised it, you'd go to Boots and you'd buy it. And right. Boots is a dispassionate company that's only interested in the bottom line. And they'd screw you over. Whereas he was quite a nice guy and wouldn't uh, cause any trouble. So your, your local friendly drug dealer is probably a better option than maybe Boots. I mean, Mike has not had that experience. What we're going to do? Come to Elizabeth, right. then we're going to go well, then we're going to live. Oh, are you guys going already? Great, sir. Let's get a final oh. thought. Before we go, Lisa, you've been very quiet in the corner there. Shed some light. What's your final thought? Drop the pipe. Come on, drop a truth bomb on us. What are you thinking? Uh, I don't know. I think coffee and alcohol are really serious drugs. Oh, okay. Thank you for that one. Mark, what are you saying before you go? So, uh, yeah, the most serious drug is probably something that's totally legal, and that's money. Really? Well, thanks for coming back, guys. Big round of applause. We're going to come to you, this oh, yeah. And Reese, over, we need to go now. Final thought before you go. Oh, I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Don't worry, it's, it's going. Tegan, any final thoughts? Um, make drugs legal. <laughs> any more final thoughts? Yeah, no, no. It's just, it's just a bit of a confused one. Tell you what, let's come, let's carry this conversation going on. Will, what were you saying? Before? What was I saying? Um, we were talking about legal. Oh yeah. Mark well, dropped the truth bomb about money's the yeah, worst. Yeah, he had drug. the whole thing about his friend, but he probably. That probably all happened somewhere in the 90s where drugs are nice and everything was warm and fuzzy. But now you've got very competitive markets and people are cutting with what, cheaper substances and it's all going to be a bit dodgy. Yeah. So you're not really going to get that now. Okay, now I promise I'll come live. I'll go live Mikey, then we'll come to Brian. Um, I just want to ask a question. Are there any medicinal benefits of MD or not? I don't know. Well, really cool. Cool. Any, anyone know? We're going to pass it over yeah. here. Yeah. I think, I mean, you know, when we talk about benefits, I think, you know, it's, you can get a, a big high from it. You do a lot of exercise and it's very good for your fitness, definitely. Um, but, I, you know, are really we, I don't want to focus because I think, I think part of this kind of NHS approach is that there has to be some kind of moralistic medina, medicinal benefit. And I think... Um, in doing that, we're kind of really missing the point of what drugs are for, which are about getting high and about a good feeling. Um, and I don't think we should be ashamed to say that's what it's about. It's not, you, oh yeah, you do make friends and you do have a, you know, you do get fit from dancing a lot. Yeah. But it's not really what it's about. It's about the, the, the feeling of, you know, of, 
of that high, really, and and, right. be, and loving life and loving people. Okay, now we are going to carry on, but we've got a new face at the table. What's your name, my friend? Uh, Sam. Sam, lovely to meet you, Sam. We have Mikey, we've got Tristan, we've got Brian, we've got... Poppy. Poppy, thank you. I nearly forgot. We've got... Hey, what's that again? Izzy. Izzy, thank you, Izzy. We've got Liv, we've got Will. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. You go, Emily, don't leave us as Sam's coming in. It's about to get heated. What, leave us with a final thought. What's your final thought? Bye. Bye. Well, thank you for coming over. So we've been talking about sort of the medicinal benefits to MDMA at the moment, and Mikey was saying that it makes you dance a lot and sort of can give you a bit of exercise. All right? Any thoughts? Yeah, come join in. Can I just want to say, I'm not, I'm not saying to people, I don't, I would advise, I wouldn't advise anyone to, to try MDMA because <laughs> you don't know what you're actually getting, and that's a problem. That's why I think it should, if it was legal and supplied by chemists, then you know what you're getting because there are some other substances when you try and make it at, in an amateur fashion that can actually poison you. Right, okay. Like PMA. Oh, okay. What? What, what's PMA? I'm going to throw it out. I, don't, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's like a poisonous kind of subversion of MDMA that can, you know, that can actually poison you. It can lead to heart attacks and stuff like that. Oh, okay, that does not sound fun. All right, yeah, does that sound like ketamine, does it? No, it's, well, no, that's not ketamine, but we were just, she thought that was ketamine. Right, okay. Well, what do we think, guys? Do we, do, do we think that this is something that... How, how would we go about regulating this, then? That was a question we had earlier. How do we regulate this if this is something we want to do? Yes, Brian? You have, like, a drug baron in, like, each individual area, like, the <laughs> Hamilton District drug baron, and he would, like, he would, would track it off. So who would be the deer shed baron? That's what I would do. I don't know. Is, is Boiny here? Then is Boiny? Would you, would, you no. have, <laughs> would, you, would you have, like... His name's what, what would you have? <laughs> what would you have, then? Would you have, like, somebody that looks after an area? Or is it yeah, yeah, like, like Hamilton. Hamilton District, Ham- Hamilton District, you've got like maybe someone in Lincolnshire, I don't know, some Geordie fella doing one in Newcastle, I don't know. <laughs> like all these different things. It's got to be local, you can't yeah, be yeah. Like, you, know, you couldn't have a Londoner come up here and take over. I think, and they have a big doomsday book just full of smack and drugs. Right, okay, well, well, well you seem quite old. Oh, okay, we're going to come over here for I don't this. think yeah. there is a way to regulate it, because it's always going to happen. Oh, that's a good point. Ah, so maybe it's not a way. Yes, Will? Uh, well, yeah. testing into like oh, each substance and then just. <laughs> yeah, Everyone looked yeah. over. <laughs> Te- yeah, testing into. Do you think we should regulate drugs? Is that, well, that's what we're talking about at the moment. You come tell us about it. Come and look. Come no, help. that's oh. all right. Don't worry. She smiled though. So we're making people what happy. Carry on, more. Sorry. Oh yeah, just testing into it. We need more research because it is a fairly untrodden path, like research-wise. All right. Now Sam's like, got we- a point. We're gonna make Sam's talk oh, debut first of all. Yes, Sam. Uh, I don't see how they can regulate it though when they're always changing it, like the dealers. Right, okay, so if they're always changing what's in the drugs, then they the can't. Dealers, all right? make, it a, make it a pharma, pharma, like, get it from family a pharma, pharma, pharmacy, not a family friendly product. <laughs> or a family fr- friendly product, yeah. But yeah, they get the pharmacies to deliver it maybe. They're going back to Mikey Barn Monday. Yeah, business. I mean, I just want to, in a way, say the same point again. Uh, you know, I think there is this kind of moralistic thing that people, th- like, don't you know somehow the government doesn't want us to enjoy ourselves to get high to do these things and you know they're not rather than aiding something which i think is good for the country which i think i personally think taking mdma would be good for the country um they actually not everybody but you know for for young people for for parties for raves i think it i think it's good for the country but rather than do that they've got this moralistic approach whereas getting high where getting high is actually considered a uh a bad thing what do you guys think do you think the government wants us to have fun yeah, you guys over there. Do you they think they want us to have they fun? They don't want us to have fun. No. All right, Mike that's disagrees. That's why they. That's why there are no legal highs. Oh, okay. So, so that's why there's no legal highs. They don't want us to have fun, but they're doing it themselves. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's the class system. Only the rich people can have fun because they have the money to back it, it up. Sounds like a played round brawl. I'm just saying. Right. So we reckon that all. So. Well, okay. <laughs> Let, well, let's backtrack. Let's get everyone on the same page. So we're saying that the elitists are getting to take all the drugs and have all the fun, but they don't yeah. want the rest of society. To have fun, so that's why they're not regulating it. Um, there's a book written in the in the late 19th century called Confessions of an English Opium Eater by Thomas De Quincey, and it's all about his experiences of taking opium. And that time, he was an aristocrat, and all the aristocrats were on opium. And it's only when that supply got to a wider 
group of people like the working class people and it's it started to people start to be worried about oh can they do their jobs if they're all on drugs yeah. that this drug legislation started to come in so it was it was the Bayer pharmaceuticals in 1912 um, came up with a trademark heroin it's actually a, a, a trade name of Bayer pharmaceuticals um, and they introduced heroin as a product in pharmacies right okay to actually to cut it was, a, it was first marketed as a way of coming off of opium addiction. Right. Now, before we carry on, we've got a new face at the table. What's your name, my friend? Stephen. Stephen, nice to meet you, Stephen. I'm Will. We're talking about lots today. We're talking at the moment about drugs and, you know, we're talking about whether they should be legalised, decriminalised, for recreational, medicinal use. And the minute we're just sort of talking about how it would be regulated. Mark has mentioned a book before. Who, who, who what was it? It was uh, Confessions of an English Opium eater by Thomas de Quincey um, but I mean the point I'm making is that it was fine and I'm just backing up what Tristan's saying it was fine when rich people only had access to drugs but yeah. when the general population had access that's when things started to have to be regulated right okay now Liv you've had a point for a while let's come over here people are kind of scared of people with money though so it's like at my, at my school it's a bit corrupt because um, like we've got the really really rich people who buy loads of stuff and um, one of them got one of them did like smells like chewing tobacco in um in, in chewing tobacco in english like like you know the one that gets you like makes you really oh. sick yeah and um he did it and then he started puking in english they took him to the med center took his temperature and went oh god that's not like he's taken something yeah. they s room searched him and found it he was already on his third last chance and then and then they were like okay well this is your last chance and then they they didn't expel him but there are other people who are like slightly more like Okay. Less, like slightly less well off, and slightly less affluent, and yeah, and yeah. like and can't, like they they can only just like afford the school fees and stuff, and, and like harsh, and they right? know that if like I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, if I'd have done what he'd have done, then he would have just been like kicked out straight away. So do we think then that the, there's more stringent regulations for the lower sort of lower yeah. working class people um, opposed to the more upper class sort of elitists? What do we think? What do you think, Stephen? Do you want to get in on this conversation? Any thoughts? Um. I think that money um, certainly does buy you influence, there's no question about that, um, but whether, the, I think the problem with drugs is that once they are available to the masses then they're just available to more people, that's why you need to deal with them, so when there was only one car on the road you didn't have to bother about it but it was owned by a rich person and then just by sheer virtue of the fact that as soon as you've got more people using them then you've got to regulate stuff, yeah. um, it's not about rich or poor, it's about the number of people who are doing them. But do we think there's already enough people doing these drugs now that we have reached that stage where it's like, right, now we have to regulate it, or is it still the yeah. stage where it's like, oh, it's not about, well, okay, where are we going to come to you? at festivals, like, the people who take ecstasy, people who take the pills, they, like, and then you just hear of people, like, getting really high and, like, MAGA and just jumping off balconies and doing stupid things, and I think that they, they're, just, they're just getting dodgy, dodgy things, and they're buying it for cheaper thinking, oh, I can't quite afford that, so I'm just going to get the cheaper one, and then it's, like, costing their life. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna come over here. The yeah. people using drugs as well is getting younger and younger. Like, there's people in s schools that are like year seven, eight, or nine, and they're already taking drugs. Right. Okay. So we think yeah, this is a problem that's maybe reached the younger generation already. So is it having a serious impact on the younger generation? What are your thoughts? Do you think the younger generation are taking drugs? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. And is that is that maybe? What do we think? Is that is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Um, it's all well and good maybe trying it, but getting that balance between trying it and realising it's the wrong path to take. Oh, you seem like a man with a lot of wisdom. Come sit down, join us, that's what we're talking about. Give us two minutes, two minutes of your time, that's fantastic. Big, big round of applause if it comes over to the table, everybody. What's your name, my friend? Paul. Paul, lovely to meet you, Paul. I'm Will. This is Hi, Talk Will. Jerky. Mikey, what are you saying, my friend? Well, no, I got exposed to drugs quite a lot when I went to art school. It was a great time in my life, but... One of the things that, that we, in our little gang at art school, we used to say that anything that we did on drugs, we should be able to, through the right kind of mental abilities, recreate with our own minds. So the drugs were just a I sort of like a, an exposure to something that we should actually be able to do with our own imaginations um, and not have to rely on drugs to create different mental spaces or different ideas. Right, okay, so it sort of gives you an insight into maybe yeah. where you would yeah. want to go. Yeah. Interesting, so you think, yeah, I mean, is that something that we agree with? Do you think everybody should maybe experience it once as a gateway to experience a sort of enhance your imagination? Breaks down inhibitions. Drugs break down inhibitions. And do uh, people discover their true self. Right. But they haven't got the self-confidence without the drugs. 
Oh, okay, so then they want to keep going back to it more and more. Interesting. I think it should be a choice, and also some people die the first time they take it. Right, so, okay. Yep. And that gets kind of back a bit to risky. being unsafe, yeah. yeah. So, it's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I mean, uh, is there a solution to this? People die from horse riding, from playing rugby, people die from crossing the street, people die in all sorts of ways. There's, if you, you've got to take risks to discover things. People die going on holiday to, the, to Bolivia, whatever. You, you, sadly, pe you know, accidents happen and people die. I don't think that's an argument to, to not do something. It's, a, it's more about knowledge and understanding the risks that you're taking. Right, interesting. Paul, before you go, my friend, give us a final thought. Be careful. Be safe and don't overdo it. Fantastic. Thanks for coming over, Paul. Enjoy the rest of the day, my friends. A man of much wisdom there. Tristan, you had a point to raise. What were Did you I? thinking? Oh, no, it's gone now. No, is it gone now? Don't worry. It happens to me all the time. That's what talking about. We've got loads of hands up. Yeah. Um, he was saying about how it's like your choice and, and how you, people die in loads of different ways and stuff, but other people are saying that it's risky taking drugs like your first time and stuff. It's not risky, say, like the traffic lights for on green for people or something. That's not risky because that should just be cars should stop. Right, Whereas okay. it, if it, you know that it's risky, then... So it's sort of like risk assessment. One's more risky yeah. than the other. So you're thinking actually crossing the road and jaywalking isn't as bad perhaps as dropping some Mandy at a festival. But we're going to come to live first. <laughs> Then we're coming over to Mike. And it's like, to second her point, it's like, you again, you don't actually know what's in some of these drugs too. It's like, yeah, you, you can sort of know to an extent that what you're doing is risky, yeah. but you don't actually quite know to the extent how risky it is because you've, you've got no way of knowing what's inside it. Right, interesting. Yes, Mikey. I mean, Reese, I can't remember the festivals down on the south coast. A couple of people died because they were taking dodgy drugs. And then once again, it was, I think that was PMA as well that I was talking about earlier on. And so that's a huge risk to take. And you need to be aware of these kind of things. Um, but, you know, I'm wondering if we could maybe, before anyone takes drugs, they should fill out a risk assessment form. <laughs> and that might be a better, a better way of doing it than making it illegal. Yeah, that could be a better way of actually regulating drugs drugs than making just blanket illegal. Now before we come over to Brian, we've got a new face here. Would you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, Michael. Michael. I was here last night. Michael. Yeah. All right, yeah, we did see you last yeah, night. Yeah. Now at the minute, we're talking about drugs and young people taking right. drugs. And is it good? Is it bad? What are the dangers of it? And Mikey reckons we should all have to fill out a risk assessment before we take any drugs at all. Yes, Brian. Well, I, think the, I think the drug barons should like produce a leaflet saying, this could happen and you might die, but it's not my fault if you do. Right, so it's like a, it's like a you're voluntarily allowed to uh, yeah, to uh, yeah, tell the substance. Disclaimer. Yet. Yeah, 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 disclaimer, thank <laughs> you. Exactly. So like, it's like, you might die and you might not die, but if you do die, it's not my fault because it's your decision to take in the first so place. It's just like a legal cover in their back, so these barons would be their backs yeah. would covered then if yeah. anything happened, maybe. What are your thoughts? Sam, you stay quite quiet over here. What are your thoughts, my friend? Don't really have any on this topic. Yeah, it's no. a bit of a tricky one, yeah. isn't it? Oh, vanilla. Uh, no, but that's all right. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> I just like to make sure everyone's still in falls. Yeah, I just want to say, just some. Um, I'm, I work with uh, in Ravensbourne School of Art in in London, and they're they're working on something called cyberdelics, which is virtual reality spaces, which are kind of like a psychedelic space without having to take drugs. So it's about creating. Because the, the psychedelic experience is a mental experience. It's not necessarily about the chemicals you take, but about your state of mind. Right, so you can actually yeah. induce this using virtual reality. Do you think that's something maybe that is good? Is it bad? Do you, you know. Yeah, I think that's good. Because yeah? there's like this, you're doing what you want to achieve through drugs on a slightly lesser scale but like just without putting yourself in any harm it negates the risk it negates the risk to yeah. so is that something you think that you would be more open to doing yeah Michael I think that that would be a good idea why um, might that be a good idea because you're not going to kill yourself by using VR are you you're not going to kill yourself you, I don't know can you kill yourself using VR we're going to come to Mikey yeah no oh, just because this reminds me of a conversation we had a couple of weeks ago on a talkie where we're talking about it was that standard conversation about kids are not getting out there in fresh air enough and they're not doing horse riding. And there was a conversation about VR horse riding versus normal horse riding. Um, 
um, and, and some people were saying, oh, you know, VR horse riding is better because you don't actually hurt yourself. But other people, mostly parents, were saying, if you don't hurt yourself, then you're not doing proper horse riding. Right, OK, yeah. so if there's no danger involved, then you're not doing it properly, perhaps. Not living. Interesting. Sam, you're yeah. taking a bit of a distance over there. You're going to come back a little bit later on. Come, Johnny, we're talking about drugs in a minute. Do you think do you think virtual reality drugs are going to be the same as taking normal drugs? No, he's done a runner. He's like, I'm not getting involved with this one at all. Come to Mark, and then we'll come to live. Um, about the um, like um, VR horse riding, I think that if you do it on the VR, you're not actually using any skills, and you're just um, looking at something, and you're not using any skills. Right. Okay. So if you're not, if so you're, you're not, looking at, you're so you're not, not actually skills. learning something. You just, um, you're just um, doing it on VR. Right, okay, interesting. All right, we're going to come to live first, yeah. Yeah, it is a skill, but it's also like it's also like adrenaline and going fast. It's like why you go on roller coasters, but yeah, roller coasters, you're not really in control of. Like, they're generally safe, but you never really know. But like, horses, you're kind of in control unless they go a bit wonky. But like, it's just, again, it's like one of those sports. It's like, if you want to get good at it, you can be in the Olympics, whatever. You can, like, you can, like, achieve things through like real horse riding but not through VR horse riding so, well I don't know could we have a VR Olympics director really I'm just the man in the middle with the mic I'm asking you guys want to see Poppy you had a hand for what are your thoughts I was just th like people you might not learn any skills doing VR horse riding but like maybe that's not the reason you want like you watch TV but you're not going to learn any skill from that you just do it because you want to out of entertainment ah ok so maybe it's more for a leisure activity instead of yeah. sort of a skill inducing one what, what's happened we're talking about <laughs> don't worry Brian you've missed a lot mate it's circulating pretty quick hasn't it alright we oh, talked about using virtual reality to sort of emulate the effects of drugs and we spoke about using it to train skills like horse riding Sam left us and sat at a distance you know it's all gone the VR thing was a bit, yeah. too, it's a bit too controversial the VR thing yeah the VR is kind of blown like I mean, we can carry on down this road do we want to carry on down the VR road do we want to take this conversation a different way I think the VR thing you're taking away a whole like piece of authenticity from whatever it is and yes you're taking away the risk but how much are you actually taking away from the activity yeah. itself and right. the whole like this, this whole aspect of life that I think gives it the excitement partly is the risk right, the risk okay, and yeah, like the chance yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's that, that's why I enjoy doing like whatever daft stuff I'll be tempted to do like go <laughs> going 100 miles an hour on a motor mic down a lane at 12 o'clock at night it's really fun and really dangerous and really, really stupid, but the risk bit and the excitement you get so from that. The risk induces yeah. the yeah, you prefer to be doing you that. Prefer I mean, to be doing doing it. Yeah, yeah. Doing doing so free, that's why yeah. I don't have a PlayStation or a, I don't go have a really expensive phone or I don't sit like a zombie just doing nothing. Interesting. Did you think that's a drug in itself? Do you think like being sort of addicted adrenaline, to adrenaline? Adrenaline is, is a drug. Is it a drug? drug? Is adrenaline a drug? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Come sit down. Do you, do you like do you well, like feeling adrenaline rushes? Is adrenaline a drug? That's what we're talking about at the moment. Well. Come sit down. Tell us your name. What's your name, my friend? My Will. Will. What a fantastic name. All right. We got two. We got three Wills at the table right now. This is the first. Yes, Mikey. If you're addicted to adrenaline, actually coffee is actually quite a good substitute if you can't get your adrenaline rush. Just have a cup of coffee. Just have a cup of coffee. Yeah, it's a, sim a similar rush, I think. You seem like a man that knows all about yeah. this, Mikey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying then? I'm going to come over to live, and then hopefully we'll get a bit of the power of will going. But again, that's just like a substitute, isn't it? Like, there's there's not really a great deal that you can substitute in from, like, going on a roller coaster or, like, skiing or being in the sea or doing a, like, whatever he does. But, like, it's just, <laughs> it's just, is there not a lot that you can do to beat stuff like that, is there? Right. Yeah. What about you guys over there? Have you ever, have you ever drunk? Do you drink coffee? We get, oh, yeah. oh no, don't go. You got to use a fun. <laughs> you thought you could sneak off. I've got Mikey watching my back over here. <laughs> Cheers, Mikey. You've got me, haven't you? He's going to leave me hanging as well. What's that all about? Yeah, Michael's got me. <laughs> Cheers, Michael. Final thought before you go, guys. Um, well, I guess clearing drugs won't solve anything because, like, we'll just move on to the next issue we have and the next one and the That's next true. one. Right. There's always going to be an issue. Thank you, Poppy. Nice, Poppy. What's your final thought? I That's agree right. with Poppy. You agree? <laughs> Big round of applause. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll Bye. see you soon. What? It's tricky, isn't it? Because people drop a truth bomb and then leave, and it's like, whoa, I, really, I want to know what they think it's about it. Right, you know so I'm going to leave, drop a truth bomb, and then come back like a minute later, right? Okay. I don't know what to say, that's the thing, I th like, you have to give me time to process what I'm going to say. Right, okay. God, I didn't actually know I was going to leave. Oh, wait. Bit of feedback, that would be me, don't you? Yeah, yeah, so I don't even know if I'm going to leave. I have to, like, actually leave. 
That's how it works. Well, go you on. can leave and come back. Let's, let's, go, let's go to Michael first. What? Speaking about leaving and come back, I actually left, but then had to come back two minutes late for a, for my drink. But then they were speaking about the World Cup, so obviously I had to join in because it wasn't about politics anymore. <laughs> 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 I mean, the world, I mean, is the World Cup political, though? Is that... Oh, 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 oh that's oh, a topic people seem interested in. Was it come sit down. Did you watch the World Cup? Yeah, come sit down. That's what we're talking so about, my friend. Club. What's your name, pal? Come sit down. Come join us. We're talking about people that have watched the World Cup at the moment. Is it political? I, I think what we'll do, there's a lot, quite a few new faces, so we'll do a round of names again. So everyone just reintroduce yourself. Tristan. Tristan. Brian. Brian. Zavi. Zavi. Jenny. Say one more time, sorry? Zavi. Zavi, what a great name. Thank you, Zavi. Jenny. Jenny. Liv. Liv. Will. Will. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Will. Will again. And Michael. Michael to bring it home. Mikey. Mikey. I'm Mikey. Will. That's Ruby on camera. This is Talkyoki. We have been on a roller coaster today, guys. Zafi, uh, I tell you, mate, it's been oh, it's no. been mad. All right. Oh, no. At the minute, Liv, are you oh, leaving us? Yeah. Give us a final thought before you go. I never thought it was coming home. I never thought. Oh, oh. Okay. Don't oh, 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 worry, it's okay. If you watch the World Cup, now's your time. Come join in because we're talking. Was it political? Do, you, do we think it was political or not? Are you coming back, Lifter? Probably. Yeah. Give us a final thought before you go. Um, I don't really like football. That's all right. That's not a problem. Food. But what do we think then, guys? Where do we want to go with this? Yes, Michael. I've just got a little idea. Go for it. I think we should all go around in the circle and tell a fact about ourselves. What you want to go for a fact? Do, 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 yeah. Is that what we want to do? Do you want to talk about ourselves? Do you want to talk? Yeah. Carry on. I mean, the power is with you. Right, I've got an idea. Should we put it to the vote? All right. Whether we can. Whether we talk about facts about ourselves. Oh, really? What do you want to do then? Yeah, yeah, let's put it to a vote. Do you want to talk about the World Cup or do you want to talk about a little bit about ourselves? Oh, Hands up for World Cup. Well, Hands up for facts about ourselves. I think World Cup. Oh, it's a tie. Don't make me. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, it's been both. Was it four? Was it, which one was it for? I didn't see What about it? a World Cup fact about ourselves? Oh, okay. Uh, a World Cup bring fact. It home. See, this yeah. is why he's a man with the experience. No, I tell you what, I'll tell you a fact about the World Cup. When England won the penalty shootout, you can have it if you want it. Uh, there's no one, no one ill has been around the table. Um, when England won the penalty shootout against Colombia, I, I cried. Did you? Uh, but it wasn't the tears of the Colombia penalty shootout. It was the tears of Germany in 1990. In Germany in 1996. Argentina in 1998. Portugal in 2006. Portugal in 2008. It all came back to me. Right, okay, now we've got some new faces. Come join us, we're having a chat. What's your name, my lovely? What's your name? Libby. Libby, we have Michael, we got Michael, we got Tristan, we got Brain, we got Zaf. Zavi. Zavi, brilliant, we got Jenny, we got Will, we got Will, and I'm Will. We've been talking about how Mikey cried when he watched the penalties for the World Cup, okay? And not just because it was one penalty, but because of all the penalties we've lost in the past. Yeah. It seems like you didn't quite let go of that one, Mikey. Well, you know what? I didn't realise that. I didn't realise it was a thing. Come and get involved in this. Did you cry during the penalties? Did you cry when you yes. watched the penalty? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. What's your name, my friend? Peter Fresh, gets to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Dan. Dan, lovely Dan. to meet you, Dan. Oh, well, we, were just, table, Dan. we were just talking about how Mikey cried when he watched the Colombian penalty shootout and we won. And he was saying that he sort of held on to the weight of all the penalties we've lost in the past. Did you get upset when you all saw that? No. No? Any reason why? I like tennis. You like tennis? Oh, okay. <laughs> tennis. All right, maybe tennis. Did you cry at Wimbledon? No. No? There's always a winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true, isn't there? There is. But maybe it's a winner in football. Mikey. I mean, the thing, the thing about the World Cup, which I find interesting, is that every country loses but one. So there's tears. There's tears from every every nation in the world. There's tears apart from one nation. And that's an imbalance, really, isn't it? If you think about it. Did yeah. everyone get like a? What's that? You could lose in the group stage and then still win. Technically. Interesting. So you can lose but still win at the same time. So there's it, like a sort of chance of redemption there, maybe. What? What are you thinking, Tristan? Should we give everyone a trophy then? Sort of participa pa participation? I sound like Sean Connery there. Participation. They all get participation, I'm sorry. So what do you think? Do you think everybody that 
participate in a sporting event should get a participation medal. No. Is that what we should have? Come sit down, that's what we're talking about. Round of applause as you join us at the table for two minutes. Come use two minutes of your time. Two minutes of your time. Come on over. We're going to keep clapping. Come join us. We're going to keep it going. It's like a panto. We're not going to stop. It's happening. That's right. Yes. Dan, final thought before you go. I've got to go back to work. Thanks. Go back to work. We'll see you soon. Come join us. We're having a bit of a chat at the minute. Come join us. We've got plenty of tables. We can... Michael, can we pop your helmet just on your lap there? We can free up another chair. Brilliant. We've got a chair there, chair there, and a chair there. Jenny, don't worry. We've got space. We have room. You've got to go to yoga. Fuck, there's so much happening right now. Let's just get a final thought from Jenny and Zafi before we go. I thought it might be coming home. You thought it might be coming yeah. home as well? Yeah. What about you? What's your final thought, my friends? Um, I didn't like it that um, England didn't win. You didn't like it? I don't think none of us liked it, but thank you so much for yeah. joining us, guys. It's been a pleasure. All right, now, before we carry on, we've got new faces at the table. I can still see you at the back. When you're ready, come join us in. So far, we've had Tristan, we've had Brian, we've had Will. We've had another Will. I didn't catch your name before. Nelly. Nelly, what's your name again? So lovely. Libby. Libby, we've had Michael. We've had Mikey. Guys, we're going to get there in a second, but let's get the names of the new people. Make them feel welcome at the Tokyo table. What's your name? Hi, I'm Rochelle. Rochelle? Eva. Eva? Lola. Lola, and at the back, what's your name? Beth. Beth, you thought you were safe there. I see you. I'm Will. This is Tokyo Key. So, we're talking about sports at the minute. And should, you know, just participate in, should you be rewarded for that? Should there be one winner? Should there be lots of winners? Yes, Michael. Talking about it's coming home, I'm very annoyed of that song. What, it's coming home three lions? Yeah. <laughs> it's important to know, before we carry on this, two rules of Tokyo Key. No singing, no fighting, okay? Before we break out in chorus. Oh, I was just... You just about to see, that's what I read your yeah. mind, that's what I'm here for. Don't worry, I've got your back there. What are you thinking then, Will? I what? can hear you in the corner. Share your thoughts to this, I want to hear we it. We were thinking about the Olympics. The Olympics? Yeah. Maybe France were on drugs, that's why they won the World Cup. You never, you never know, they weren't checked. Ah, okay. At least to our knowledge. Yeah, if we regulated the drugs, this wouldn't happen. If we had drug <laughs> barons, steroids wouldn't be no, no, widely no, no, used. No, no, no. That's an interesting one. Do you think I there should be that. steroids in sports? Do you think no. you should be allowed to enhance sports players? Yeah. Lots of shaking heads over there. No? What are you thinking, Will? Well, it's up to you, isn't it? Like, some footballers are a lot faster and fitter than others, and that's because of themselves. Right. Whereas if you just give a fat guy some steroids and he gets ripped, that's well unfair, isn't it? Okay, now we're going to come to Mikey and see what his Mikey's saying. I mean, it's uh, we do take it a bit too seriously. It's only a game, really, isn't it? It's, it's, only, it's only a game. Yeah, it's just a game. It's a, it's something to be enjoyed. I love, you know, actually going to the park and just watching some people play football. It doesn't have to be like the very, very best footballers in the world. Do, do you think? Do you think it's just? It's sports is just a no. game. Is that right? Do you, no. do you agree? No. I don't think so. What what do, you, what do you think sports is? Um, serious. It's, it's serious. quite serious. Yes. Do, what, what do we think, Rochelle? What are your thoughts? Do you think sports serious or should it be recreational? Any thoughts? Different people do it for different reasons. Some people do it for fun. Some people do it for, for recognition. Some people because that's what they're good at. Other people do it because they're competitive. I think there should be space for everything. Um, but there's an impact when it's all about competition. And that excludes people. And that's that's a problem. That's a lot a of problem. wisdom coming out of you there, Rochelle. Oh, yeah. hell. So, do, do we think that's maybe negative then? Is sports having a negative effect if it's making fe people feel excluded? But sort of tying with what Mikey was saying. If sports, having, if sports has a negative effect, then if the if they think it has a negative effect, then probably the best thing to do is not play it. So then you don't feel like it has a negative effect. Ah, oh, okay. So maybe don't don't take it into account. Just sort of block it out. I think with France, just going back to the point that France won the World Cup, every other country in the world is crying. But it's mostly losers, isn't it? It's mostly losers, and that's really life. Um, but, you know, they're all, they're all participating, they're all getting involved in the competition, we're all watching, you know, so it's not... It, we've just got to accept that we're all m probably going to lose in life. That's yeah. Get used to it, and I think that's the lesson to be drawn from the World Cup. Do you think? Do you think you can live your life without losing at something? Do you think? Do you think you can win at everything in life? Me? Yeah. I've just won the World Cup. I'm a Come sit down. That's what we're talking about. This is perfect. Mark's mother. Hello. I'm Tristan and Jude's mother. <laughs> Who's Jude and Brian actually? Yeah, well, we've got oh, Tristan yeah. and Brian yeah. at the table. You can pick you your name. You know my cover. <laughs> 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 yeah, I 
about to say something. <laughs> Come sit down, Tri yeah. Tristan and Brian. Big round of applause, you join us here for two minutes. Give us a last thought before you go, guys. How's it feel about losing? Yeah. Losing good, do you learn? I think we learn a lot from losing. Um, I think you can't win all the time. And and actually, the sooner we learn that, the, the better. But it doesn't stop you trying. I agree. Well, thank you. Big round of applause. Enjoy the rest of your day. And keep the round of applause going okay, well, as you come join us at the table. Come sit down. Make yourselves comfortable. That's all right. You can sit at a distance. We're going to go to Will first. I think winning and losing is a very perceptive thing. It's not like you can, though, is it? Well, you can lose something. Like, you can lose the World Cup. But then you can just learn from that and just... Not be bothered. Like I'm not. I'm not bothered. We didn't. We lost. We lost the World Cup. But it's like, don't matter, does it? So do we think losing? Can we go you know, next time? Do you think you need to lose at points? We're gonna come. We just go over here. Then we're gonna come back. Um. Yeah. So then you get a feel of defeat instead of winning all the time. Right. So it's important to have a sense of defeat sometimes. Right. Interesting. Right. We've got some new fans. You're gonna come join us as well, pal. I'm gonna chat about sports in a minute. Yeah. Can I yeah give us two minutes of time. Two minutes of time. Come on. Round of applause. Come join us. Two minutes, two minutes, you don't have to stay for long. There's no time limit, it's fine. That's right, we've got some new faces, what are your names? Daniel. Daniel. Tom. Tom, I'm Will, we've got many faces here. We're just having a bit of a chat about sport and whether or not losing's important. I think you learn, actually learn more when you lose than when you win. Like we were talking earlier on about three hours ago about Brexit. Yeah. Um, and actually, actually, ago. Jesus. We, we've learned a lot about the flaws in the political system, you know, how, you know, uh, we've learned a lot about Bre I mean I well I'm, I consider it a loss because I wanted to remain in the EU um, but actually you learn more mm. if you learn more when you get it when you don't succeed so maybe you're going to learn more I mean is that what is do people agree with that do you think you actually benefit more when you lose from when you win yes Michael I think you do benefit more when you lose because you, you can learn from your mistakes that you made to make you lose Oh, interesting. Do you, do you think it's important to lose sometimes just so you can learn from things? Come join us, come sit down. So we're talking about give us two minutes. Big round of applause, join us at the table. We like clapping and making people feel welcome here. What's your name? Jenna. Jenna, lovely to meet you, Jenna. I'm going to do a round of names. I'm going to test my memory. We have Michael, we have Mikey, we have Tristan, we have Brian. Brian at this table. But we also have Will. We have, is it Jenny? Jenny? Gemma, sorry. <sighs> ben. No, help me out, my friend. Daniel. Daniel is close. Uh, Tom. And Tom, we have Will, we have. Nelly. Nelly, how can I forget? And finally. Libby. Libby. Thank you, guys. You're going to have to bury me. Lots of names today. But we've been talking a lot. So, yeah, do you think it's important to lose? Do we learn more when we lose than when we win? Yeah. Yeah, and people need to learn how to deal with failing and right. failure. Yeah. I, t I teach, and you see, if kids have always. Have never, never w practiced the other side of picking themselves up off the floor. So it's, it's important. There's a certain yeah. way to handle defeat. Do you yeah, think? definitely. All right. Yeah. Do we agree with that? Yeah. It depends what attitude you've got because if you lose, you might just think, well, I'm not going to win, so I might as well just give up. But if you win, you might just keep on trying. So Libby, you sort of agree with Gemma that it's all about how you handle that defeat. So maybe when Colombia, you know, when we lost all those penalties before, you didn't have to hold on to that Mikey. We could have let it go. Yeah. What do you think? It's nostalgia. Isn't it? I mean, uh, you know, I think in a, I, I think, yeah, we, you're, learning, you're learning all the time, but I, th I think that actually... <laughs> In a way, dealing with the defeat of, you know, I'm still dealing with 1990, 1996, 1998, and 2006 and 2008. Yeah. I'm still dealing with all of that, and I realise that now. And actually, so actually winning the penalty shootout made me realise about the, you know, the losing and the, and the emotional consequences of that. So, is it in a, in a way, it's about how you lose and that, how you deal with the losing. Yeah, you not in agreement there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop wrapping the kids in cotton wool. Yeah. Let but them fail. Do you Let think? Fail. What do we, What do we think, Daniel? Daniel, guys, what do, we, do we think we should fail in life? Do you think it's important at school to fail? Yeah. Otherwise, you're not gonna like learn that if failing, if you fail in later life, it's not a bad thing necessarily. Safe space. Yeah. 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 Uh, kids, do you know at school? Don't, don't you think it's worthless when everybody gets a certificate? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. worthless, yeah. isn't it? It should be mean something. Right. And so it needs to be given out carefully rather than just, you're all winners all the time. Well, Mikey was saying earlier, he felt that everybody might sort of should be rewarded for participating in things, perhaps, sort yeah. of events. But something 
but you also need to know the difference between the elite and you're you're good you're talented and you're better at something else you might not know what right. it is yet interesting okay now we're going to spin it around we've got lots of hands we're going to come over here first of all nelly um it's like when you're younger and you've got a younger sister and your dad and your dad doesn't want to choose which one's better so if you go oh dad which is a better drawing and then dad says both and you're like no pick a real oh, yeah. answer yeah they always, they always say they don't have favourite but I know all my dad's favourite out of the three oh. brothers so it's okay as long as you know that's the most important part speaking from what um, Jenna said um, um, it's but you should like get a certificate for participating but if you haven't really done much then you don't really then you shouldn't really get a certificate because you haven't really participated enough to to deserve one and so who do, who do you think should choose who's participated enough and done enough all right yeah over here my man well i think that um, I think that sometimes the adults should choose because they can like recognize when someone's tried hard or just gone and not done anything but also sometimes I think the kids should be able to choose because then they can say oh I think this person was the best at like so in football I think this person was the best passer or so like scorer. The man and match thing, yeah. yeah. So is it should be sort of a mix of the two, there should yeah. be adult awards, there should be children's awards, do we agree? Um, I agree, but I also think that a manager or the coach should think who's like, who's like really given their best. It's sort of like the players' player award. Then they should choose. Now, Daniel, we have a point over here. Yes, my man. I think I think the opposition in like a match should choose because they're the ones who's been on the other side of the effort. So they're gonna know who's putting in more effort because it's gonna be harder to beat them, and then it's gonna be easier to be the ones who aren't putting effort in because they're not now, doing uh, stuff. Do you know what, Daniel? I can hear a lot of a lot of agreement from behind us that maybe that's a really good idea that the opposition, the opposite team, should choose who they think the best player was. Yeah. Because they're the ones oh, that yeah. have sort of been oh, credited yeah. with it. We've gone here to Brian. But if you get absolutely smashed by someone, you'd be like, oh well, they smashed me, so. Uh, they, they, yeah, they're and it's pretty maybe decent, learning how to handle that I defeat like we were saying and choosing somebody to be better. We're going to come Will, we're going to come Mike. They already, they already do that in rugby. Like It's quite a good system, like man of the match and uh, pools are drawn by different like, like oh, neutral countries. It's a, it's a good good yeah, system. Yeah, so it already works. Do you know what, Daniel? You're head of the bell curve, all right? It sounds like you're a rugby fan at heart. I'm going to bring it over to Mikey. I wonder if they should do that in politics as well. Like, you know, like the opposition should choose who the best politician on the other side is. Ooh, okay, so you think like Corbyn and May should choose one, one from Labour, one from Conservatives, maybe? Yeah, I mean, who's the best politician? Who would they choose? You know, who's like the, 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 more, the, the worst thorn in your side? All right, we're going to come over here. Well, I think, I don't really think they should do that because they would just pick the worst arguer from the other side, so then, like, uh, they would get their way. Do you think it would become a little bit too political? Jenna, have we got an idea um, over here? Well, no, actually, I'm just, just interested in the young people here because in my job, I have to cast youth theatre plays. Oh, okay. Right? So I direct youth theatre. And there's two things. I can either put the, the most talented kids in the lead roles, most of the time, I prefer to find plays that we have more equal parts, right. and it's not about who, yeah. So how do you cast a play? Because it's not a competitive sport. <coughs> so it's interesting. Do you give everyone equal stage time, or should leads be allowed to shine because they are talented in acting, and not everyone is? Now, I'm going to open that up, but we do yeah. have a little thing we like to do at Talk Gig, which is called Turning the Mirror. So I'm going to turn it back on you now, okay. Jenna, oh, and yeah. say, what do you think? Yeah. Um, most of the time, youth theatre, the kids are there to learn the skills of theatre. That's why they come. It's not school. Don't have to be there. So, I, we try and pick plays where everyone has loads of time on stage. So you're not sitting in the wings going, well, why did I come? Because I don't, I'm only on stage for three minutes. But, um, so those who are really gifted should be given a chance to really get their teeth yeah. into a great character but I think everyone else should be their chorus backing them up right, okay. with loads to do so so not, yeah. not left in the wings so maybe enhancing the ones that are interested we'll take that next yeah. step and yeah. then letting the others Perfect. still participate yeah. yeah that's right so what are you thinking Mikey? I, I think the thing about theatre is you learn more when you play the role than you, when you watch the role so if you're just watching somebody you go oh yeah okay they killed the king and everything but if you're actually kind of there 
being it, being embodying the character, you learn way much more. So in a way, I think that's an argument to the, the people that need the most learning should be the ones who actually take those roles on that, that could learn most from that role. So do you think we, do you think there should be more theatre in schools and different subjects? Like there should be like uh, I, I like a political theatre module yeah, where they pretend yeah. to be Theresa May. It should be the basis of school. I think yeah, school, of school. Yeah, oh, like right, like yeah. everything should be taught through theatre. What do you what do we think? Like guys over here, uh, this side of the table's gone a little bit quiet. What do we think? Do we think there should uh, yeah, not some, not some agreement? Well, in our school, we only have two drama lessons a week in year eight, and I think we need more. Yeah, yeah we need well, more. we're going to go over to Jenna, Michael, then Will. Um, nationally, it's been proven that drama is being squeezed out of the secondary curriculum, and this we mustn't let it happen quietly. Oh, right, no. nice one. We're going to go Michael, then we're going to we'll come go to Will. Great. Speaking about, um, like, it's getting squeezed out of the curriculum or whatever, um, um, that, that's kind of happening because I only have drama once every two weeks. Right. So not, like, twice a week in year, right? like, what, um, like, what, um, you, like what Tom said. So do you, is, is that a primary or secondary school? That's a primary. That's a secondary school. A secondary school, yeah. No, Will. Actually, yeah, I get it. Year eight. Yeah, just yeah. like that. Um, the year before I took my GCSEs, there was drama running for every year, and it doesn't run anymore. Because just because. No, it doesn't run. It, it hasn't run for my year. All right, does, it well, does it run for yours? We're going to come over to Will, so what we're thinking? Yeah, it runs for ours because people, enough people chose it. A lot of people don't like doing it because it makes them cringe or whatever. So it comes down to popular opinion then, so whatever the, the sort of consensus of the year group wants, then that's what goes forward. Plus the, te the teachers aren't great, which doesn't help. The teacher, what, sorry? They are great, which doesn't help. Right, so do we think the, sort of the ability of the teaching staff has an impact on sort of how students receive a... Yeah? yeah? Well, school's a bit of a business now, isn't it? Yeah, well, do you think, is school becoming a business now? Yes, Daniel? A bit. A bit, but, like, I also think, going back to the drama thing, that, um, not many people, like, think, oh, I want to be a drama teacher when I grow up. They kind of think, like, if they take drama, they want to be, like, a Hollywood kind of actor. Right, okay. No one thinks about teaching drama. So it's like, if more people thought about teaching drama, then the curriculum would have drama in it more often because there'd be more people who'd want to teach it, so there'd be more jobs. So to we teach need it. more people that sort of go into drama because they want to become educators, want to become teachers. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, Tom, you seem to agree. I think at the moment, drama, like a if you've taken drama as like a GCSE and like when you're older and you like would need money to get into a, like a higher acting level I think drama teacher would just be like a side job for a lot of people like because you wouldn't have to go in every day I don't right, think okay. good people good. we can go to Michael first yeah um it's it's probably true that like um and um, um, drama's been taken out because there's only um, one drama teacher for the whole school and there's at least about 700 or something in, in my school or something. Right, okay. So you maybe you need more, so is it like you have like several maths teachers, you need yeah. several drama teachers as well. Oh, I've got, we're going to go um, Jenna, we're going to go Will, we're going to go Mikey, then we're going to come to Libby as well. I just think it's really good that you should know, um, I've been actually doing some research into this with uh, lots of lots of adults, um, because maths and science and English have been upped, all the teacher training time and money to train teachers is going to those subjects so teachers are not being given the time to keep their skills up in drama so they might be getting a bit rubbish so it's a full circle so they need yeah more time given to staff members maybe yeah so they can talk yeah about their skills. yeah all right where's who's going to go to next who are going to come to will michael yeah yeah, yeah that's right well, that, that comes back straight back to the whole school's just becoming a business and it's in and that it's, it's a bit heartless really because yeah. you, you're not taking it's become a completely one size fits all thing which is wrong the really. Soul's been taken out. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, people have no choice. You've, you've, you've got, you're allowed to learn this. Oh, get you. in, yeah, shut up. <laughs> you're allowed to learn this and nothing else. I think which, I is, it. which is a bit wrong. Really. Cheers for the chips, Sam. Appreciate that one. Nice one, mate. All right, we're going to go to Mikey next. <laughs> I, I just think, actually, I think that we're talking about core subjects. I think drama is actually the core subject. I don't think it's like a fringe subject. I think drama is actually more important than maths and English and science because that's how you teach math and English and science. Interesting. Now, 
We've got new. Is it, is it still Nelly? No, new fan. Yeah, it is Nelly. You just took his hat off. I was like, is this a new person? Is this a twin? I wasn't quite sure. There. We're gonna go Michael, then Libby, then Nelly. All right. Drama is good because, like, at my school, whenever we have it, which is like once every two weeks, um, like everybody tries to get involved. Like everybody's like saying, "Oh, can I be in your group? Like, can I do this? Can I do so that?" It builds inclusivity <laughs> with people. Plus, you can build like sets with like blocks and stuff, so that so that helps. Yeah, nice. Now, Tom, Daniel, are you leaving us? Yeah. Can you give us a final thought before you go? Um, we can get a final thought for you know. as well. I don't know. Uh, I just think the drama is actually really important. Because, like he said, uh, it helps people do team building and stuff. Nice, thank you, Tom. Daniel? Also, I think drama's important because, like, if you're going through something, like, someone in your family's died and you're emotional about it, then you could let that out with drama instead of letting it out in a different, kind of more violent way. Daniel, you have dropped some truth bombs today, my friend. Sorry, Will. Will, we'll come to you. Final thought, my friend. Uh, all right. Stay happy. Enjoy the rest Stay of the festival. Happy. Thank you. And you said you were going to go back. Give us another final thought before uh, you go. What was it about? Anything you like at all. Doesn't matter. Uh, you tell us what you're doing next if you want to. I don't really know. Um, She's going to go get lost. Is it about school? Yeah, we're talking about school in a minute, but it's anything uh, you like. Anything at all. I think... I think schools need to change how they run because I feel like if if you don't pass an exam then it's kind of it seemed as like the end of the world kind of thing. Yeah. When in fact like there's always different routes to get to different places and I don't think they're explained enough in schools. Right. Now, I think the time has come guys because actually Brian and Tristan are leaving us. Yeah. Oh my god. We've been here. Oh. We've been here since the beginning. Yeah. So many people are leaving. <laughs> oh no. What? Maybe it's time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's time yeah. to have a break. Yeah. Right? Tell you what. Tell you what. Be before everyone goes, how about we get a round of final thoughts? We'll take a little break and then we'll kick start it up a little bit yeah, later. Yeah. Because yeah? yeah. we need to eat as well. We need a bit of food. I, as long as it takes us to grab some food and get back in the middle. But before we carry on, guys. I'm just gonna stay at the desk. That's okay. Before we carry on, let's get some final thoughts. We're gonna come to you first, Tristan. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Let's get one final round of thoughts oh. and then we can all leave. Oh. Let's share oh. a final thought with um. each other. Because it's been a journey, guys. It's been a journey. He who controls the past controls the present. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to start with that Good luck following, Brian. Um, <laughs> I just want to tell everyone to stay groovy and uh, 420 Gucci Gang and all that. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Well, do you want to share any more? Are you happy with your oh. final thought you had before? Good shit. Good shit. Oh, no. hey, good food. I'm, I'm getting a bit of food every right now. Jenna, bringing it home. Okay. What's your final thought? Okay. I just want to say to you kids, you can change your school your education system don't let it become this factory okay, okay. Oh, change it change it let's all fight it do you want to add another final thought <laughs> Good about anything anything you like <laughs> what's the first thing that comes to your mind uh don't know don't know that's all right sometimes <laughs> we don't know that's cool we'll pass it on though will what's your final thought people don't want to become drama teachers because kids are horrible to teachers people oh okay interested <laughs> nelly what are you saying um, the, Ooh, that, that was me not you don't worry that when um people when like your maths teacher says oh you you're going to uh use maths every single day of your the rest of your life but you'll actually use drama to be able to speak to people so and, use drama more than and Yes. Um, be more confident to other people. Yeah, you're going to be more confident. Libby, final thought. I think that um, the teacher really has a real impact on how you learn because if your teacher's saying, well, you can't do that, that's not good enough, you need to try harder, you might just feel like, well, I shouldn't be told what to do. I, I can do what I want. Yeah. And the, by them telling you what to do, it makes you just not want to do it. Most definitely. Michael, final thought. A wasp climbed into his beer. Yeah, it's, it's, all right. it's, it's, out, it's, it's out now. It's out now. Bit, bit, protein, now. bit of protein. It's all right. Is that your final thought? Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Nice one. Thank you, Mikey. Bringing it home. What's your final I th thought? I think people have just got to realise that actually schools are not educational institutions they are storage centers for young people just so, so that there's you know so that they're off the street they're out of danger um, and then they're, they're there to to make people conform they're not actually there for to develop people we need to change the paradigm of education and, and make it focus on the student and and let them lead the education system and and do what follow what they want to do amazing stuff guys 
this has been Talk Kick. We've had Mikey in the middle. We've had Ruby on camera. I've been Will. Give yourselves a round of applause. You've been Ace. We are going to bring it back in a little bit. We're just going to get some food. You've got prime time seats. Don't miss them because we'll be back with a vengeance in a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm staying here.